Okay. Next chapter of God's book. Isaiah 53 in the day of the Lord. My knee is in the way of the Lord. Chapter 39. Oh, God dictated this book to me as he dictated the Torah to Moses. And each of the books of the books of the prophets. Isaiah, all of Isaiah was dictated by God to Isaiah. Same for all the prophets, Malachi, Ezekiel, Jeremiah, all of them. And uh, none of them could have really understood the information that was being set down. Moses, I'm sure, did not realize, unless God told him, that the Jewish people would derive 613 laws of God for them to follow and be observant in out of five books. I mean, if you go ask a Christian, what's, what's, what are the laws of God? Ten Commandments. <laughs> and they're fanatical about, you know, those that are observant are fanatical about it. Whereas a Christian, what's a Christian got to do? You stand up in church and you say, I accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. And I believe in the resurrection. Everybody claps for you. Sit down. You're done. <laughs> you don't have to do anything. Then that the truth? Jonah, this is, uh, this is Jonah and God's five refinement for prophets. Jonah does not want to go to Nineveh. Oh, well, you should most definitely, you want to know more about the five refinement, go look at uh, chapters 21 and 22 and the introduction. There's three parts to that introduction. They all cover 53 and in particular, verses 4 and 5. Jonah does not want to go to Nineveh and warn the people of God's displeasure with them as he fears. They will repent and God will not destroy them. Jonah, like Moses, Ezekiel, and myself, apparently had a furious spirit. He wants God to crush them all. He wants him to destroy them. Being an unwilling prophet and believing the people of Nineveh, Nineveh are beyond salvation, Jonah flees by ship to Tarshish. God creates a storm knowing the prophet Jonah will be thrown overboard to his death. And Jonah has a graphic account of dying. Now he is ready to do God's bidding and goes to Nineveh as he was told to do. Jonah is so emotionally distressed knowing God will relent of his anger on Nineveh, he desires to die. So God prepares another lesson for Jonah. This whole story is the fire of fun. He comforts him with the shade plant so he is happy and loses his anger. Then God takes it away and brings wind and heat that physically makes Jonah so miserable he desires to die again. God caught will cause the circumstances and expose a prophet to death I've been exposed four times, courtesy of God. Exposed. Jesus wasn't exposed to death, and they say he is the man of Isaiah 53, which is ridiculous. He died. That's not exposure. Exposure is just getting real close to it. Close call. To get him to do as he is told, or to offer himself for guilt, as I did, uh, 
as he does with the righteous servant of Isaiah 53. He will inflict emotional pain and physical pain so great that a prophet will desire death. The righteous servant of Isaiah 53 is stricken and crushed with disease, cancer, stage 4 cancer. They're given online. They said it was untreatable. I said, what do you mean it's untreatable? They said, look, you're going to die within a month. You need to prepare for death. <laughs> I hadn't seen a doctor since. Just walked out of there, expecting to die. Cause they showed me x-rays of my lungs, white spots, just like the stars in the sky, as they say. And that was 22 years ago when the planes hit New York. Stage 4 cancer uh, people, a year at best, even if treated. You just don't survive it. Cancer grows, it doesn't go away. And I said I hadn't seen a doctor. I did go and get a checkup. I wasn't sick or anything. Recently, he had me do this, I guess for these videos. And uh, it was to get chest x-rays. And guess what? No cancer. It's like he, I never even had the symptoms from him. Now I had colon cancer, that's, that's where the lung cancer came from. It metastasized, it spread. Uh, and I beat the colon cancer and I, I did six months of chemo for it and they cut an eight inch tumor out of my colon. <clears throat> and uh, it was brutal. It was brutal. So long, I'm not going to get into the whole story. But um, the lung cancer, never really felt it. The symptoms of lung cancer, you know, I didn't have any problem with breathing or coughing or anything. And uh, God said he pretty much uh, put it, put, gave me stage 4 lung cancer full of x-rays. <laughs> when the x-rays were done, he removed it. This is what it seems like. Man, I was looking at stage four lung cancer, and yet it's not there today. And cancer just doesn't disappear of its own. It can stop growing. I guess that's... Uh... Okay, well, anyway, let me finish up. The righteous servant of Isaiah 53 is stricken and crushed with disease, and then he is chastised, punished, maltreated, crushed and bruised, those words all come from Isaiah 53. In the power and words of God, until he is suitable for God's purpose, and taught the scripture, taught all these things before I typed them, so that by his knowledge the many are made righteous. It's up to you, God. I think we can get 40 on here and not 41 though. Okay, I don't like to combine these. I like to reset the memory card and get a separate videos for each chapter, but that was so short, I'm going to carry on with <laughs> right. chapter 40. Job and the righteous servant of God. Well, they do kind of go together, doesn't it? It's Jonah and Job. And that's going to be changed to Job and God's fire refinement. The title. The Lord said to the adversary, that would be Satan, Have you noticed my servant Job? There is no one like him on earth, a blameless and upright man who fears God and shuns evil. He still keeps his integrity, so you have incited me against him to destroy him for no good reason. The adversary answered the Lord, skin for skin, all that a man has he will give up for his life. But lay a hand on his bones and his flesh, and he will surely blaspheme you face to face. 
So the Lord said to the adversary, See, he is in your power. Only spare his life. The adversary departed from the presence of the Lord and inflicted a severe inflammation on Job from the sole of his foot to the crown of his head. This is Isaiah chapter 53, verse 10. But the Lord chose to crush him by the disease that, if he made himself an offering for guilt, he might see offspring and have long life, and that through him the Lord's purpose might prosper. Out of his anguish he shall see it. He shall enjoy it to the full through his devotion. In the book of Job, God tests the devotion of a righteous man whom God knows will think that God owes him an explanation for his suffering by indirectly crushing him with disease. God's pestering me. I'm still in the fire refinement 16 years later. And I started out pretty slow. He would just make some part of the day really bad, painful, uh, maltreatment particularly, emotionally. You know, he told me, I created emotion, Keith. I can do anything with yours. I said, then why are you changing me or trying to if you can just do it in your power? And he said, that's not the way I do things. I said, change it. And he said, no. And then, now you know what a day with God can be like, at least with me, in the fire of refinement. In the book of Job, God tests the devotion of a righteous man, whom God knows will think that God owes him an explanation for his suffering by indirectly crushing him with disease. Righteous servant, God chose to crush him with disease, but give him long life. In the book of Isaiah, God creates the devotion of a sinner. I was an atheist for 50 years, and God orchestrated that, as he did my whole life. Um, and, I, and so many bad things happened to him. I was in the hospital every two years, getting another surgical scar. I had about 20 of them at one point. Now, when I lost count, I guess. <laughs> and uh, so many bad, you know, just like a lot of people, so many bad things in their life, they're just like, well, God doesn't care about me. Why should I care about God? If there is one. In the book of Isaiah, God creates the devotion of a sinner by directly crushing, directly, Indirect with Job, crushing him with the disease and accepting the offering of his self for guilt. And that's the guilt of the Jewish people. Remember, he becomes the righteous servant. The, the, the witnesses in the first six verses combined by quotes are sick. And most of it is with guilt. Because they don't follow the laws of God. They're not observant Jews. Okay. My job, make them righteous. So if I got a head start, I have a covenant of sin forgiveness, which ought to help draw on. Because I bet most of them think they have a sin in their past that God will never forgive. A young poor, it's his decision whether to take a restitution and repentance from anybody. Uh, but this is carte blanche. Everything is erased. Clean slate for everybody. Okay. This next chapter is too long to, to get to, to combine. So that was uh, 38. No, that was 39 and 40. We did start on 38. Right, we already got three, uh, no, we got two videos. Okay, next, chapter 41, the man clothed in linen is Elijah. It's pretty complicated. 